Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have this, which is the Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5 16 IMH9. So this is the Core Ultra Series 1 based version of this IdeaPad Pro, and we're going to get inside and take a look at how to replace the battery, upgrade the SSD, and also how to clean out the fan and replace the thermal paste. So to start off with, we have a Torx T5 bit in our screwdriver, there is a description uh, below which has links to uh, where to get an appropriate screwdriver set um, along with a suitable SSD and other parts that we will be fitting uh, or using today. So as we remove the screws we're going to replace them on our magnetic mat. Uh, the three along the back here are longer and then the other six are all shorter. These are a little bit awkward because the chassis angles, so they're not completely flat. But so long as you have a good condition T5 bit, you shouldn't have any problem. Uh, it's just noticeably a bit harder than on some machines to remove them. There are no hidden screws on the base of this laptop. So everything you need to remove here is exposed from the get-go and you don't need to remove uh, these feet from the base as you see on some systems. And so with all of these removed, we're now going to take our plastic pry tool. We like to use a plastic tool here because it uh, minimizes risk of any damage to internal components and also means you're very unlikely to scratch the metal of the laptop chassis. So here where the, uh, the base meets the palm rest, we are going to find that gap and press in and down with a little bit of force. We're then going to do the same on the other side and the pry tool will go in like that. We're then going to take it along this top edge. We're going to hold as well just to... So sliding that along up to the depth of the little indent on here just to release clips along the back edge. And then with that done, we should be able to pull up and then lift the panel like so. Once inside, our first job is going to be to disconnect uh, the battery. So we have here uh, the battery connector and we are just going to ease this down and then get our pry tool in underneath to get that free of the connector. Uh, this can actually be a bit easier if you just take the battery out, uh, which we will do in a moment. So yeah, getting this clear of the connector is a bit of a faff, but if you push it all the way, you can disconnect it like that. If you're doing upgrades, then you can obviously just keep that connector pulled loose. Um, but let's take a look at the battery replacement. So for our battery, uh, so the model for this is an L23M4PF1 battery, and it is held in place uh, with PH, so we've got a Philips PH0 screwdriver bit in now. And to remove this, so if we want to replace the battery, so if we've had a failure, we have two screws here. And with that done, we can then lift the battery up and slide it forward to take it out the chassis. I'm going to put it out to one side just to make things easier to see as we work on the system and we'll put it back in at the end. Memory is not upgradable on this model, uh, it's under this EMC shield and it is soldered to the main board. For versions with discrete graphics you may find you have a slightly different uh, heatsink design because I can see here there's uh, silkscreen components where a GPU could possibly be soldered down but this version purely has integrated graphics. So in terms of SSD, we have the primary SSD already installed in the system here, which is an M2 2240 drive. This is an NVMe type drive. And to remove and replace this, it's a simple case of undo this single screw and then slide out the SSD. To fit it then, we have just to slot it back in and screw it back down. What we can also see is we do have a slot here for a second SSD, so I'm going to grab a drive uh, out of my drawer. 
So to install a second SSD into here, uh, we see here that this allows for a longer uh, M2 2280 type drive and also has a mounting point for a 2240. And what we need to do is first of all, remove this single screw for this uh, little heat shield piece here. And with that removed, we can lift that clear. We then also want to remove this screw. And so with that done, we can take our M2 drive and slot it into here. And then fit it by reinstalling the screw. Obviously, if you are replacing the main SSD, you are going to either need to clone the contents of your old drive onto the new one, or to uh, do a clean install onto the SSD. If you're installing a second SSD, then this just needs to be partitioned uh, and you know, set up in disk management in Windows, and all your data will be retained on the first one. With the SSD in place, we then want to refit our little cover shield and refit the screw. Also replaceable is the, uh, the M2 wireless card. So this is a AX211NGW uh, uh, card. Uh, so this uses uh, the MV... This uses the CNVI protocol. Uh, so you could swap in a PCI Express type card as well, um, but you probably want to use the CNVI type cards. So slotting the... Uh, the pick in underneath, we can remove the two antenna. And then to remove and replace the card, similar to the SSD, it's a case of undoing a single screw here. And then we can lift and pull out the card. And then to refit, we simply slot back into place, screw down, and then probably the worst part of the whole job we need to refit the antennas. So the gray one goes on to number one, which is aux. So position and click down. And the black on to number two, which is main. Click down. For servicing the cooler, uh, you do have the option of there is a gap on each side, so you may be able to um, just get a brush and some compressed air to blow up dust if you have uh, build up along the heatsink. However, um, we're going to go through and show so full heatsink removal, repasting, and also how to remove the fans if these need replacing or cleaning uh, out of the system as well. So first of all, we're going to start with the right side fan. So this fan is the easier of the two to remove. And first thing we're going to do is just get our pry tool in and just lift gently the fan connector clear. And then we have three screws to undo here. This cable for the screen does not need to be removed on this side. Uh, there is just one piece or a little bit of routing to be aware of when refitting it. So with the three screws removed, we can then grip the fan and lift it up. And then we just want to make sure this cable is clear of the little routing guide and we can slide that out like so. From here, we can then go in and clean the fan blades or replace entirely if needed. Uh, and I will put uh, try and get the part number into the description as well. The left side fan is a little more complex. So we do again have three screws, which we're going to just start by removing. And we are then again going also to remove the fan connector from the main board by lifting up. And then we're also going to disconnect our Wi-Fi antenna 
and this additional connector to the screen as well. This is because we do need to uh, do some cable routing around here as we remove the fan. So if we lift the fan and pull it free, we can then push down the screen cable and the two antennas and then unroute this around this side. These do need to be put back into place obviously as the fan is being replaced but for now we can clean that up uh, or replace it if it's necessary. To remove the heatsink we then have an additional three screws here. These look to be retained. With these undone we can then lift by the heat pipes and again we just need to that this cable here needs to be it's held on with some tape so let's pull that tape back and then that cable is free as well and with that, we can lift the heat pipes clean, clear. On the heatsink, we have a thermal paste for the CPU, and then there are also some thermal pads here. If these pads need replacing, you need to source some, um, looks to be about one millimeter thick replacement pads, and then cut them to size to apply here. I'm not going to replace these today, but I am just going to clean up the thermal paste from the heatsink. Just using a little IPA for this and just scraping that off and then doing the same for the CPU, wiping off the old thermal paste as best we can. before applying some replacement onto the CPU die. Um, because this is what a uh, core ultra based machine, we can actually see it's multiple tiles on here. Um, so there are little joins where all the little tiles come together, uh, but there is no separate PCH on these, so it appears just as one chip. With the paste applied to the CPU, we now want to take the cooler, uh, the heatsink, and Bring this into position, aligning the screws, and I'm just going to attach that tape back there for that cable. We're then going to go around the screws in the order shown on the heatsink, so one, two, three. This will press down the thermal paste and spread it across the CPU for us. We then need to refit uh, our fans. So we're going to start with the left side and get the cables into position. So we want to go in the top here, then under, then over, and then under. So doing our best to get those cables rooted in get the, cable, the fan angled into position and all nice and slug, snugly. We're then going to first of all get the fan header connected, then this ribbon for the screen slotted in and press down that cover and then once again the bit that I really love, reattaching the antennas. And with those all secure, we can then adjust up the cable if we need to and get the fan screwed back down.
The other side fan is much easier, so we just need to make sure the cable goes over on this side and then slot the fan into place. Make sure that cable is clear and press down. Then reconnect the fan like so. Then it's simply a case of putting back in the three screws. And with that, we have serviced our cooler. So with all that done, we can then refit our battery. Uh, to be honest, when you're working on this machine, actually removing the battery uh, completely is almost easier because it makes it so much easier to disconnect and reconnect uh, the battery connector. But we're going to slot that back into place and then slide the battery into position like so and refit the two screws. And with that, our work on the system is basically complete. All that's left to do is refit the back panel. So we're going to take that and align it on the front. With that slotted in on the front edge, we can then hinge it down and begin to press it back into place. Hearing the clips re-engage, press in the middle as well. And then all that's left to do is refit the base screws. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have, do give us a like and let us know what work you were doing on your system in the comments below. As before, in the description I've got uh, links where I can supply them uh, to the parts below via Amazon Affiliates. Uh, so if you do buy any of those, that does help us out with the running costs of the channel. Um, if you'd like to see more videos as we post them, you can always give us a subscribe. And if this has helped you and you want to contribute as well, there is also the super thanks option. So other than that, I hope this video has helped you with your system uh, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.